Have you ever gotten stuck mid-draft wondering who your characters are and what they should do next? In this video, I'm going to walk you through the three aspects of character development that you should consider before you start writing, and the ways in which having well-rounded characters is actually going to help you figure out the points of conflict and tension and crisis in your novel. Hi, I'm Megan. I've been a professional writer and project coordinator for five years, and I love helping frustrated writers organize their writing process so that they can finish their projects and meet their goals. I've seen a lot of writers, and I've done this myself, charge forward into a new writing project as soon as they get an interesting idea. Maybe a scene or a character pops into their head and they just start writing. I've definitely started projects where I only have a general sense of who my characters are, but what happens when I don't develop them fully from the start is I end up with a lot of questions down the line. Is this how they would respond? Why are they responding that way? What are they going to do next? Do I even know what they look like? Who are they? Or sometimes I spend a lot of time figuring out my main character, but then all my secondary characters end up more like fillers than actual people. What I've learned is that putting in the time to figure out the ins and outs of your characters up front will actually make it easier for you to figure out the points of conflict and crisis and tension in your story. So before you start thinking about characters, you likely have an idea for what your story is going to be about. I would suggest turning that idea into a premise that can inform who your characters are and where the story is going. If you want to know how to turn your idea into a premise, you can check out my video on that. But assuming you already have a premise figured out, the three aspects of character development you're going to want to consider are your characters physiology, sociology, and psychology. All three will impact your character's view of themselves, others, the world around them, and the events of your story. So let's start with physiology. What do your characters look like? How do they carry themselves? It can be really easy and tempting to assign random traits to your characters. Maybe they're blonde, maybe they're brunette, doesn't really matter. But growing up with blonde hair may give someone a completely different experience than if they had grown up with bright red hair. Just think about Anne from Anne of Green Gables. Her red hair is a constant source of insecurity for her. All of your character's physical traits are going to have some kind of impact on who they are. So it can be helpful to think through what your characters like and dislike about themselves and why. Every time you give your character a physical trait, think about the kinds of stories that they might be able to tell about that trait. Maybe it's as simple as they have brown eyes, but everyone in their third grade class thought that brown eyes were the color of dirt and made fun of them. That's an experience that they wouldn't have had if they'd had blue eyes. Do I speak from personal experience? I'll never say. Or it could be a trait that plays a bigger role in the story. I think about Sarah from Staying Fat for Sarah Burns. Her burns are literally a huge part of the book. So that's your character's physiology. What do they look like? How do they carry themselves? And how has that impacted who they are as a person? Now we're going to move into the second aspect of character development, sociology. Where did your characters grow up? How did they grow up? What were their friends and family like? You want to think about the external social influences that have impacted your character over the course of their life. Were their parents warm and involved, or more cold and distant, or maybe a mix of both or one of each? What traditions or habits or rhythms exist in the culture that they grew up in? Did those transfer any values to your character? Did your character have all their needs met, or did they struggle to get by? Understanding where your character has come from and what external influences have shaped them will help you determine how they see the world, how they interact with it, what they expect from life, what they expect from other people, and what kinds of decisions they're likely to make. And both physiology and sociology play a big role in the third aspect of character development, psychology. So as you can imagine, psychology is all about what your characters think, what their personality is like, how they behave, and what motivates their behavior. You can start with physiology and sociology and think through how they may have influenced who your character is. Again, Anne from Anne of Green Gables, she's got that fiery red hair, all those freckles, that's her physiology. She's an orphan, she's been passed around from home to home, that's her sociology. She's driven to find and fixate on beauty at Green Gables wherever she can find it, and she uses her imagination all the time to kind of escape from the disappointment of her real life. She's also highly emotional a lot of the time and is often in need of reassurance that she will not be abandoned. And that's all part of her psychology. Or if you already have psychological traits in mind, you can use those to inform your character's physiology and sociology. 
For example, if I knew one of my characters was really goofy and outgoing, I could think about what physiological or sociological traits and experiences would have led them to be that way. Maybe they're just naturally a more outgoing person. Part of it could be because they were never very confident in how they looked, so maybe they use humor and goofiness as a way to mask that insecurity or deflect attention away from how they look. That's physiology. Part of it could be that they grew up with someone, maybe an uncle, who was also goofy and they wanted to emulate that person or maybe that person really encouraged their goofy side. That's sociology. So I hope you can see more of the ways in which physiology and sociology can help you determine your character's psychology, but also your character's psychology can help you determine their physiology and sociology. Other questions you can ask to get to know your characters are, what would they do if they had a whole day to themselves? Do they process information logically first or do they process it emotionally? Are they more of a planning and organizing type or more of a fly by the seat of your pants type? I'll let you guess which type I am. Do they take initiative or do they wait for others to do so? If they could have lunch with a famous person from history, who would it be? And always follow up each of these questions with why. So once you figure out all of this information about your characters, you'll be able to more easily figure out the points of conflict and tension that are going to happen in your story. Why? Because it'll be so much easier to know how your characters are going to react to each other, to situations, to whatever you throw at them. Alright, so you've got the premise of your story figured out and now you've fleshed out each of your characters' sociologies, physiologies, and psychologies. Now I'll show you how putting the two together will help you plot your novel. So let's say we're writing a story with the premise of finding worth within oneself leads to greater self-confidence. And let's work with that example character who was goofy and outgoing and really looked up to his uncle. Maybe he was insecure about the way he looked, but he also looked a lot like his uncle. He saw how everyone else in the family loved his uncle and thought he was so funny, and he wanted that for himself too, since otherwise he felt like he would be unlovable given the way that he looked. Just getting deep. So we know he idolizes his uncle and looks to him for affirmation. From there, it's important when you're thinking about your story timeline to consider what event is going to get your character to their turning point of they're starting out thinking this way, they're going to end up thinking this way. So in my mind, I know this character does not find his worth internally. So immediately I'm thinking he gets his worth from his uncle. We got to teach him that he's not going to get his worth from his uncle anymore. That means the uncle's got to go. So maybe that means he dies. Or maybe that means he thought his uncle was a really great guy and it turns out he's not. So right there, that's a great example of maybe your main point of conflict, the conflict that sends your character on their journey to learn the premise. From there, what you have to do is think about what comes before that event and what comes after that event. All the events leading up to that main point of conflict should build tension, should kind of chip away at your character's thought about the premise. So maybe one of those events is he has a really bad day at school and he needs to get in touch with his uncle for reassurance, but he can't get in touch with him for some reason. Or maybe he tries to use humor to deflect a bully at school one day and it doesn't work. Or maybe it's even hints at who his uncle really is. Maybe he overhears his parents arguing about his uncle. Something that gets the wheels turning and moves him towards that main event, that main conflict that's going to change his life. After that, your character has to go on the journey of learning where to find his worth, which is where the premise comes in. Coming to understand that finding their worth within themselves leads to greater self-confidence. So our character doesn't know who he is anymore, his uncle's gone, everything he thought he knew is wrong. What might that lead him to do? Maybe he tries to avoid his feelings altogether. Maybe he tries to find something else to put his worth into. Maybe he ends up discovering more about his uncle that makes him realize his uncle was struggling with a lot of the same things that he was. And it ultimately reveals to him that you know, he's got to find strength and worth from inside. All of those things could be events in the novel that follow that main point of conflict. But because we know our story's premise and our character's sociology, physiology, and psychology, we can fill in an outline of our main points pretty easily. We know where our character needs to start, where he needs to end up, what he's like, and how all of that may affect the journey he takes to get to the destination. So, whew! To recap, let's go over what we just learned. Before you start running full speed towards your next writing project, think about your character's physiology. What do they look like? How has that affected them? 
Think about their sociology. Where did they grow up? What was their family like? What's their culture? And think about their psychology. What are they like as a person? How do they think? Why do they behave the way they do? From there, you'll have a stronger foundation to build your plot with points of conflict that flow naturally out of who your character is and what they're trying to learn. I hope these tips give you a better sense of how to think through your characters. Organizing your writing process so that you answer these questions up front means you won't spend as much time as I have in the past wondering who your characters are, what they're going to do next, or rewriting scenes based on their ever-changing personalities. <laughs> if you want more tips on how to organize your writing, hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you next time. Bye!